What's going on guys? This is Eddie from Man Made Kennels and today we're going to talk about why a mother dog doesn't want to take to her puppies or what are some reasons why she doesn't produce very much milk. Um, maybe there's a puppy in the litter that's not thriving very well or not wanting to latch on. It's very weak. Um, we're going to get into the whelping box of one of our English Bulldog puppies and Sarah's going to teach you some techniques that you can do at home to get your puppy on the right track and get your mother dog on the right track of being a great mom. So guys, we are doing this from our home. It is live. Um, we're recording, but there's not very many edits that we can do when you have a live litter of puppies. They're gonna eat when they wanna eat. They're gonna poop when they wanna poop. So please excuse that. But um, these techniques should teach you how to be prepared for any bad situation that may come along um, with a newborn uh, puppy and with a new mom. We do have a fly in the room. Yeah. Again, it's live, so we gotta <laughs> take it with us. We have puppies and they're pooping behind Sarah right now. But um, we try to do these videos for you, so please hit the subscribe button below. And without further ado, let's get to it. So a mother dog produces a litter of puppies. A lot of times with small breeds like the English Bulldog breed, they have to have C-sections. And when they have C-sections, there's a chemical that's released um, in the mother during a natural labor that says, hey, you're a mom now, and starts to help them produce milk. This is me breaking it down in the easiest terms for you to understand. So when they go through labor, uh, they dilate, and they have a litter of puppies and then the milk starts to flow and the puppies do great and the mom starts acting like a mom. When you have a C-section though, that doesn't happen. So when a C-section happens, you kind of intervene usually before the temperature drops and the, the, the hormones are released that she needs to know that she's a mom. And so she ends up becoming a, a, going to sleep, waking up and realizing she has five little puppies trying to suck on her nipples and get milk out of her. And sometimes you'll have an aggressive dog that does this. Um, they get aggressive, not because they don't, they're not gonna be a good mother, but a lot of times they just don't know what's going on and that's just their temperament. So what we do is we wanna kind of introduce them to the puppy slowly. They need to eat and they need to eat the mother's milk the first few days. There's colostrum that comes in that mother's milk and it helps them thrive, helps them produce some antibodies, gives them the best fat. Everything that they need to thrive as a puppy comes from the mom. The antibodies come from the mom's milk. So when you try to intervene with bottle feeding, that is a no-go, it's not very rec not highly recommended by us. Um, so we would suggest that you follow the techniques that Sarah's gonna show you in a few minutes. Sometimes you'll have a puppy that doesn't want to latch on. They're weak uh, for whatever reason, maybe it's underdeveloped, maybe it's been a while since it fed. Um, so you have to do some certain techniques, certain things that you can do at home to kind of get that puppy back on board. One of the things that we like to do is we like to just give that puppy a little bit of a hydration, a little boost. Um, one of the ways you can do that is you can lift the skin up on the back of the puppy's neck, which is about right here. You just lift that skin up, right? I'm not gonna do it because I don't wanna wake him up. But you lift the skin up on the back of the neck, use like a diabetic needle, or if you can get your veterinarian to do it, it would be much better. And you just put a couple cc's of uh, some saline fluid underneath the skin, not into the muscle, but just underneath the skin. And that will hydrate your puppy and get it back on board. We've been doing it for a long time. It helps out tremendously. Um, another reason may be that they're cold. Um, puppies need to be in some uh, pretty warm temperatures. 87 degrees is ideal. So you may have a puppy that's just cold. And so if you get some warm water bottles, surround them around some warmth, put some nice heat lamp over top of them, give them a little bit of time to, to kind of recover from whatever shock they're going through, they may latch on on their own. Um, in, the, in the instance where they don't latch on, you can always give us a call at 302-272-3625 and we will definitely help you out. Um, Another thing that may be happening here is you have an undeveloped, underdeveloped puppy. Um, a lot of times with C-sections that happens because a veterinarian, they try to get you in, do the C-section. They say, hey, you know, it's a weekend. We can't do it on the weekend. So you need to come in, you know, Friday. Friday may be day 57 or day 58 on your calendar. And that's not ideal. But the risk is, is that you do, a, you wait the weekend and then she goes into labor on Sunday and you have to go to an emergency clinic. And so, it's a catch-22. A lot of times vets will offer you a steroid shot and that kind of helps to open up the lungs of the newborn puppies while they're in the mom before you have a C-section. You can ask your vet about that. Um, it does help a lot with the puppies if they have to come out a couple days early. Um, but don't do a C-section earlier than 58 days. It's not ideal and you will see that the first couple days they're doing okay and on day three they start to drop like flies. Um, what were some other things that we wanted to talk about, Sarah? Oh, so the mother, um, not just C-section. Sometimes you have a mom that's just young. She's young, She's she doesn't like other dogs. 
She's not crazy like you would think she is. She's not just a bad mother. She just doesn't realize she's gotta be a nurturer. So one of the things we're gonna show you in here, our, our, our girl's not that bad, but we're gonna show you how to prepare that, that litter of puppies for a mother that's like that. And we're gonna teach you some ways that you can kind of uh, help alleviate that stress that she's gonna have with those puppies, all right? So without further ado, let's get started. By the way, big shout out um, to the donations that we get. Big shout out to Bully Aid. Um, guys, the 4 one Soft Chew, the best product on the market. Get it for your puppies. Mix some Bully Aid powder into your newborn puppies, uh, to your uh, mother dog's food, and get them ready. If she is suffering from calcium deficiency, it will help her with calcium deficiency. All right, so let's get in that whelping box, guys, and let's get going. All right, guys, so the whelping box is ready for Portia. And we're gonna bring her over here and show you all how we prepare her for her litter of puppies. Now this can this can work with aggressive moms, with moms that just don't act like good mothers, um, pretty much any mom. And so we're bringing her in there right now. And Sarah's gonna get her comfortable in her area and then lay her down on her side. And then slowly but surely we'll introduce one puppy at a time. So what Sarah's doing here is she's getting her in the position that she wants her in and then she's soothing her. And the reason we do this is because we want the mother to feel like this is, if she does this, she's gonna get a lot of love and attention. And so she gets real comfortable, relaxed. And once Sarah feels like she's good and relaxed, we'll have Eddie give her one puppy. Do you let her know, let us know when you're ready, Sarah. Okay. Are you ready? Yep. Okay. So we'll take one puppy. Now, if she does it, she does this, what you just seen her do, Sarah's going to encourage her to lay right back down. She's gonna keep her hand there on her neck. With one hand, she'll hold the neck, and with the other hand, she'll help the puppy latch. So show them how you'd hold the mom's neck there, Sarah, and then help the puppy latch. So if you need two people, see how she tried to get up just then? You may need two people to hold one of the head and then help the other puppy latch. Um, one of the things that you'll notice, what's up, what's up Ed, show us, tell me what's going on. No, no, it's okay, you're fine, you're fine. My son wanted to help. <laughs> but you can actually go on the other side, Eddie, show him how you would hold her down on that side. And then we'll bring, Emma will bring in another puppy for us. Emma, can you get mom another puppy? Okay. So Eddie's gonna kind of soothe her like this while mom brings another puppy. Now, Sarah, let's say one of the puppies are not latching on. What is something that you can do to help that puppy latch on? What I like to do is I always um, grab the nibble and I'll put the puppy up close I'm gonna to try it. to zoom in on that real quick, guys, so you guys can see it. Go ahead, Sarah. And I like to, whenever I have the nipple in position, I always take my other finger and I'll slip it right there in the corner of his mouth so I can kind of prop it open. And I'll have the nipple and I just kind of stick it Together. And usually they latch on. If not, just try again. And sometimes when they when they latch on for a couple of seconds and then fall off, what do you do? I just kind of hold it up there in position just so it can continue to grab it until it gets that good suction going on. Awesome. Latches. All right, and then what you those back nipples typically have the most milk. You want to watch and see that it's possible that if it was an early C-section that the mother's not producing very much milk. Um, if that puppy doesn't seem to be thriving after you know half a day I'd go and double check those nipples and make sure there's milk coming if there's no milk coming you may have to do this and supplement feed so she's she keeps trying to get up and then Eddie holds her down and kind of pull that front leg out from underneath her like that and she won't be able to get away yes these are some hungry puppies right Ed <laughs> but they're good puppies. Yeah, big ones too. So, one of the other things we talked about is if a puppy's too weak to suckle, all right? Um, we have a diabetic needle. Do we have any of those right now, Sarah? Uh, well, you nice. can take a diabetic needle or a, a needle in like a 22 gauge syringe and you'll lick, you, you'll not lick, but <laughs> watching that puppy go on that nipple so fast. 
You'll lift the back of the <laughs> neck up. Right, Sarah? Yes. Show them how you lift up the puppy's neck. Put, 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 put that puppy, there you go. Show them how you lift up the puppy's neck. So she lifts up the skin from the body. The reason, hold on, Sarah, right here. Okay. She lifts the skin up from the body. And the reason she's lifting it up from the body is because you don't want to poke that puppy. Sorry. Oh, don't worry, don't worry about it. I got it already. All right, same area that a mother dog would pick up her puppy and transport her is where you want to kind of lift up. So right on the back of the head. Now Sarah's got long fingernails right now, which is very rare for Sarah, by the way, guys. Sarah, here, you're lifting up too high from the camera. All right, so you lift up the skin from the back of the neck, and then when the skin's away from the body, in that skin fold, you can put a couple cc's of fluid. If they're dehydrated, those couple cc's will help rehydrate the puppy and then they can get back to eating in a little bit. Um, usually I just leave like a little golf ball size hump on the back of their neck with some distilled water or saline if your vet's really cool, um, and then you should be good to go. If you ever have any questions or you're just going through a hard time and you're just nervous, you can always call me. My number is 302-272-3625, and I am available to every person that loves dogs. So it doesn't matter what time of day it is. Now, I will tell you, I have kids, I have a life, and I get tired. So sometimes when you call and I sound grumpy, please excuse me, but I will help you, I promise. Um, we don't accept money, so you don't need to worry about that, but we do accept subscriptions and shares. So if you tell your friends about us, we'd appreciate it. And um, I don't know if there was anything else we were supposed to talk about, Sarah. Uh, you know, we're, this is, like I said, guys, we're just doing this video. Um, it's live, these puppies are literally, happening right now. Oh, if you have a mother dog that wants to eat their young, the same concept that we just did just now, exactly the same thing. You're gonna hold her down. I don't encourage muzzling a dog, but if you have to muzzle her for the first few days, it's okay. And the reason behind that is the colostrum that this dog, that the milk has in the first few days is literally, it, it's something that saves their lives. Without that, a lot of times these puppies don't make it. It provides antibodies, her milk has the most fat. Um, it's just something that helps them thrive. And so we encourage you trying to hold her down and forcing her to let them feed. But if she doesn't, you can muzzle her. And again, hold her down. She won't be able to get to the puppies either way. And after about two or three days of you doing this, she will become a better mom. Believe it or not, you'll be like, no, I can't believe, but you'll notice that she's a lot less aggressive towards them. And you'll also start to get more milk flowing. Um, one of the things that you'll see with C-sections is that they don't produce a lot of milk. Make sure you keep them on the nipple. Even if they're not producing milk for the first few days, keep them on the nipple, keep them suckling, and eventually the milk will start to flow. Uh, one of the things that we tell people to do is to go get some Bully Aid, B-U-L-L-Y-A-D-E, mix it into the mother's food as she's pregnant and she'll have it helps her absorb more nutrients and gets her better prepared for a litter of puppies um, you can also mix that into some gerber baby food or some chicken flavored baby food um, and then give that to the mother and you can also mix it into their puppy's food once they hit about six weeks old five and a half weeks old and help them absorb more nutrients um, one of the things that we're looking for there is calcium. Um, calcium deficiency is a big problem with new moms, with moms in general, when they're having puppies and they're sucking so hard. Sir, Eddie, can you put that, mom? Okay, there's a puppy that's just gonna give her a big hickey. Um, we try not to let our dogs get hickeys on the back nipples. And um, she's got a puppy that's pooping right now, so that's what she's taking care of. But again, you can hit the subscribe button guys, ask us any questions that you want, and we hope that this video helps you. It's a little long, so just call me directly if you, if you, if you can't remember what I said earlier. Talk to you soon. On the count of three, y'all do it at home. One, two, three. Peace, man-made kennels. God bless, guys.